Hi, my name is Margaret Schmidt, and I am a program manager for Microsoft Project. I've been working on the Microsoft team for about a year and a half now, and I specialize in scheduling and accessibility for Project. And today I want to talk to you about how to deliver on time with dependencies and Gantt charts in Microsoft Project. So just going over the agenda a little bit, uh, first I want to talk about dependencies, how to create them and why they're useful, uh, then constraints, how to create them, why they're useful, and then lastly, we're going to talk about effort, duration, and assignment in Projects for the Web and how you can use those to make sure that your project is delivered on time. So we're going to talk about most of these in a demo today, but to, just to set that up, we're going to be talking mostly about a worker named Lucy who works for a nonprofit in the Seattle area and has been tasked with organizing a fundraiser for her organization, and she's using Microsoft Project to do so. Because she's Seattle based, she doesn't want to do a wine tasting. She's decided to go with a coffee tasting uh, just to be a little bit more uh, location specific. And just a few of the things Lucy wants to keep in mind when she's setting up her project. First of all, she wants to ensure that everything she needs to get done gets done in the right order. Secondly, she needs to ensure that everything gets done before the date of the fundraiser because the date has already been decided. So she needs to make sure everything gets done before that. Then lastly, she wants to track how much work she's doing and how much work her colleagues are doing so they all get the appropriate amount of credit when uh, the event happens. So I'm gonna pull up Microsoft Project now and we can just jump in. So I have signed in as Lucy and I've opened up Microsoft Project, project.microsoft.com, and I am now on Project for the Web Home, if you haven't seen that before. You can see down here, I have a few projects, but I have two versions of my coffee tasting fundraiser. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up that second one there. Um, that was the first one that Lucy made. And as this opens up, you can see Lucy has already put in all of the tasks that she needs to do and all of the, um, dates when they need to get done by. If I go to the timeline, um, I can see that it is actually laid out for me to see when all of the tasks need to happen. And I'm even gonna expand this bar so I can see all of the names of all of my different tasks. Uh, so the first thing we wanna talk about here is constraints. So Lucy has assigned herself to all of the tasks dealing with event location, and she's laid out when they need to get done and when all of the other tasks need to get done. But as we all know, you know, working on projects, our initial plans are never quite what we expect them to be. Um, and things slip out, which is totally fine. Uh, but we want to be able to track those in Microsoft Project. So let's say that Lucy's identify potential locations task slips out a little bit. Um, and you can see I dragged that task and it slipped out, which is fine again. But uh, we see that, you know, identify t potential locations. And then the next task is choose location. But we can't really choose the location without first identifying locations. So I'm also going to drag, zoom in a little bit so it's easier to grab. But I'm also going to drag that task out so it happens after the initial um, identify potential locations task. And then we have a reserve location task, which, you know, we can't reserve a location until after we choose it. So I also have to drag that task out. I have a signed location contract and pay deposits, which we can't do until we've already reserved the location. So I'm also gonna t drag that task out. So just slipping this one task caused all of these other tasks to get slipped out um, and created a lot of work for Lucy to do. And let's say that this was you know, attached to another task. Say we have an invitations task down here, and now I have to make sure that I'm not designing the invite before I've chosen the location because the invite should have the location on it. So by slipping one task, it created actually a lot of work for Lucy. But let's go see our other copy tasting fundraiser project. So I'm gonna open up my copy. And while I wait for that to load, I can see that all of the tasks are the same. But when I go to the timeline, I'm gonna see dependencies. Uh, so dependencies are these little arrows. We're gonna give them a moment to load. Uh, that show the relationships between tasks. In Projects for the Web, we support finish to start dependencies, which say that when task A finishes, task B can start. So let's do the same thing that I did in the last project here. So I have my identify potential locations task, and I'm going to drag that out, say it ends at the end of this week. As we can see, all of these other tasks jumped out too. Project saw that this was going to end a little later, and the project rescheduled all of these tasks. We can even see this dependency here where we're saying, hey, the event day 
relies on the location being chosen. So everything is connected and we can make sure that everything is getting done in the right order. Even if, as I said in the other project, I wanted to have a dependency between the locations, I could grab this little thing here. Let's zoom out a little to make that a little easier. I can grab this little bubble here and scroll down to my invitations task, see the design invite and create a dependency. So that arrow is there now. And now if the location tasks ever slip beyond when the invite tasks are scheduled, the invite task will be rescheduled. So that's how you use dependencies in Project for the Web. Now, once you have your dependency set up, Project for the Web tries to schedule all of your tasks as soon as possible, or ASAP. As you can see here with our event location example, um, as soon as the identify potential locations task is done, the choose a location task is scheduled, and then the reserve location task is scheduled because Project wants you to get everything done as fast as possible. This isn't always what you want though. For example, we can scroll all the way down to when the event day happens, and I'm gonna open up the task details for that. The event day is happening on May 3rd, and that can't change. So no matter how fast Lucy and her team get done all of the tasks leading up to the event, the event day can't change. And we represent this in Project using constraints. So when I open up the start date pane, I can see this little star and down here it shows me that I have a constraint on this task, which is that it should start no earlier than May 3rd. When I remove this constraint, the task actually gets rescheduled to the earliest possible day that Project thinks this task can happen. In this example, it gets rescheduled to April 28th. Again, no matter what, the event day has to happen on May 3rd. So I really need a constraint there. And I can do that by coming in and manually selecting the day that I want it to happen. That automatically creates a constraint in here. And then again, this task can't be scheduled for any day earlier than May 3rd. So I'm gonna come in here and Lucy is going to start assigning tasks to different people who are working on this project. And as we can see up here in the group members section, Lucy has already created a group for this project that includes herself and three of her colleagues. And I've also added the effort field to my project grid. And you might say to yourself, you know, effort and duration, those seem really similar, but there's an important difference here. Duration represents the amount of time between the start and the finish of your task. Uh, so for example, on the choose location task, the duration is one day because it starts and finishes on the same day. However, we don't usually spend an entire work day working on only one thing. So the effort field is there to measure the actual amount of time that someone is spending on a task. So I'm gonna go in and assign this uh, choose location task to Lucy. And project is gonna automatically update the effort field being eight hours because Lucy works eight hours during a day. But I know that Lucy isn't gonna spend her entire day working on this choose location task. So I'm gonna update this to two hours. So everyone knows how much work Lucy is actually doing on this task. Now, here's the trick when it comes to duration, effort and assignments in project. Project reschedules your effort to ensure that your effort keeps up with the amount of people and the amount of days on your task. So if I come in and I'm gonna assign a second person to help Lucy with this task, which is Brooke. I'm gonna click out of there and Project has automatically updated the effort to four hours because it's assuming that Lucy is doing two hours of work and Brooke is doing two hours of work. Of course, if I actually think that this is still only two hours, I can come in and fill that out and project understands that that is just two hours. And again, this is really helpful because it lets your managers know how much time you are actually expected to spend on a task. Or if you are a manager, it helps you keep track of how much time uh, your different employees are spending on a task, and maybe if they're a little bit overworked or underworked in project. So that is everything about how to uh, use effort, duration, and assignments in project. Of course, Lucy has a little bit more work to do here, but we're gonna let her do that on her own. We're gonna go back to my presentation. So now that you've learned everything, let us know what you think. First of all, I recommend going into project and trying this out yourself, creating dependencies, constraints, and messing around with effort and duration to see how they affect each other. And also checking out our support documents on support.microsoft.com to learn more. The other things I recommend you do, uh, we have another session on resources and calendars in Project for the Web. I recommend you check that out as uh, creating resources and calendars really changes how effort and duration act in Project for the Web. Uh, if you wanna learn more about that, that's a great place to learn. 
Uh, we also have a few scheduling roundtables scheduled for project conference. Um, if you're still watching this within project conference time, check out the website to see when those are happening. If you want to give us direct feedback on what your scheduling experience is. And then the last thing is you can always give us feedback about this or anything else using our in-app feedback button. Um, so if you're in Project for the Web, there's a little smiley face in the top right corner of the product. And if you click on that, you can actually send us direct message telling us what you like and dislike, um, which I read every single day. And make sure if you do that, that you include your email with what you're sending so that we can email you back if we have any questions or concerns about your feedback. And that's it. Thanks so much for watching.